Hey y'all, welcome back and welcome if you are new. It's fall and football season and I am here for it. In today's video, I am making three cozy fall soups and I am so excited. So let's get started. Okay guys, so first up, we're gonna be making a crock pot chili mac. It is absolutely delicious and it's so easy. So here's everything that you're gonna need. I've got some ground beef here. Now you can use ground chicken, you can use ground turkey if you want to make this a little bit leaner. But I'm gonna use uh, some ground beef. For my spices, now you can use whatever kind of spices that you and your family enjoy. But here's my lineup. I've got some chili powder, some onion powder and garlic powder. That's these two right here. I've got some cumin and some oregano. Now I'm going to be using a smoked paprika. I like that this gives it a little bit of that smoky flavor, but you can certainly use paprika. If you don't like paprika, you can just leave it out. So I've got some of that there. And I'm going to use some red pepper flakes. This is optional. If you don't want it spicy, you can leave it out. Or if you want to add more of a kick, you can add some cayenne pepper into this as well, or some chipotle um, chili seasoning. So yeah, that's all the spices that I've got. I've got some salt and pepper. I've got a little bit of beef broth because what I'm gonna do, the recipe calls to completely cook your pasta noodles. I'm gonna cook my pasta noodles about three quarters of the way done, and that's where the beef broth comes in. So when I add the beef broth and it cooks down, and I cook my pasta about three quarters of the way, it's gonna finish cooking in the chili mac in the crock pot. So I've got the beef broth, pasta, onion, and some diced tomatoes. These are just half jars that I had sitting, and I'm going to use these. So. Let me get everything situated and then we will get this going. Okay, first up, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chop up my onion and add it to my ground beef in a skillet on the stove top and then I'm just going to brown this up and cook it until the ground beef is completely cooked through and my onion is tender. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this and then once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and add it to my crock pot and then I'll meet you right back here and we will add everything else. All right, my ground beef and onion mixture is completely cooked through. The onions are tender. All I did was just add some salt and pepper to this. If you have any extra grease that's from the um, ground beef, just go ahead and drain that off. But this is done, so I'm gonna cut the heat off on this, and then I'm just going to add this to my crock pot. Okay, so I've added my ground beef and onion mixture to my crock pot. Now all I'm going to do is add in my spices, my beef broth, and my tomatoes. I'm going to add in a little bit of extra garlic um, because we like garlic. I'm not going to add my pasta in now, but if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but I'm going to wait and cook it later and then add it about an hour before it's done. So... Plus, I forgot to tell you guys this, you're gonna need some cheese. I forgot to lay it out, um, but you can add as much cheese to this as you want. I'm probably gonna add about one to two cups of cheese because we like our chi uh, chili mac a little bit cheesy. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all of this and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all combined. Here is what everything looks like once I get it all mixed and combined. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to cover this with a lid and I'm going to put this on low for about mm, four hours. But at the three hour mark, I'm going to go ahead and boil the pasta about three quarters of the way done. And then I'm going to add them to this mixture put the lid on and let it cook for an extra hour just until the pasta is completely cooked through. So I will show you what it looks like when it's all done. 
I just come in here just to check on this and give it a little stir, make sure everything is well mixed. And y'all, this smells so good. This has still got to cook for about an hour. Um, I'm just going to put the lid back on and let it finish up. And then we will come back and I'll cook the pasta, drain it, and add it to this. Um, and then add some cheese and let it cook for an hour. Well, we'll let it cook for an hour before we add the cheese. But I'll meet you back here when it's time to add the pasta. Alright guys, so I just went ahead and cooked my pasta. And it's cooked about three quarters of the way. And I just drained it and I added it in here. So I'm going to put the lid back on this and I'm going to let this cook for about about an hour or so. I will add a little bit more of that beef broth in there just so that pasta has a little bit more liquid to finish cooking all the way through. And then I will shred the cheddar cheese and add that in there and then this will be ready to plate up. Okay guys, here is my bowl. It smells absolutely delicious. All I did when I put the noodles in there, I let them cook for an hour on low. Just put the lid on there. You know, I started up, put the lid on, let it cook for an hour. After the hour was done, I added my cheese, gave it a stir, put the lid on, turned the crock pot on low, um, not on low, but on warm. And I just let it hang out for about 15 minutes just to melt that cheese. And then I plated it up. In this little bowl here and then I just added some more cheese because we like cheese and some green onions and you can plate this however you want and this smells delicious it looks so good so I'm gonna go enjoy this this is what we're having for dinner tonight y'all it is finally cooling down outside and i'm here for it it's in the low 70s today the sun is out it's got a nice cool breeze and i'm here for it so to have for dinner tonight we're going to be making some um, chicken tortilla soup now this is my play on two different recipes i just kind of merged them together to create my own but i will leave both recipes in the description box below so you can make one or the other or you can combine the two like I'm doing. So here's everything that you're going to need. Now I've got some diced tomatoes here. Now if you have a can of Rotel, you can use that. So I'm just going to use half this can of diced tomatoes. And I'm going to add some green chilies. I don't have any Rotel. I need to pick some up. So I'm just going to combine these two. I've got some black beans that I'm going to drain and rinse. I've got some chicken broth here. And now I've got some cornmeal. This will go in right at the last 30 minutes or so before it's done. So that will go in at the end. I've got some garlic, some tortillas, tomato paste, some cilantro. You can use fresh if that's what you prefer. I've just got this bottle that I need to use up in the fridge. So I'm going to use that. I've got some chicken thighs here that I just thawed out, uh, excuse me, chicken breasts that I just thawed out. You can do chicken thighs. This is just what I have on hand, so I'm going to use that. I've got an onion, salt and pepper, oregano, chili powder. Um, this is garlic powder, if I can get that to focus. Maybe not. I've got some cumin and some onion powder. Now with the seasonings, I don't have, I ran out of chili powder. So if you have chili powder on hand, you can do that. But this is just the combo that I'm going to use. You use whatever you like, whatever your family enjoys. So I'm going to get you guys set up and we'll get this started. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to chop up my onion and I'm going to put this in a skillet with a little bit of oil, not too much because I don't want the soup to be oily. I'm going to cook that down with some garlic until it's nice and tender and then we will add that to the crock pot. In the meantime, I'm going to drain my black beans while that's cooking and I will meet you right back here and we put everything in the crock pot. To my crock pot, I've just got my chicken. Um, I just salted both sides of the chicken with some salt and pepper. I cooked my onions down till they were tender, added some garlic, salt and pepper, and then I cooked that for about a minute. Added that in there, and then I just added all of my seasoning, my chili powder, my cumin, garlic powder, 
onion powder, all the seasonings in there. So now what I'm going to do is add half this can of tomatoes. Let's see if I can get that out. There we go. And I'm going to add my entire can of green chilies right in there. Sorry if it's a little shaky. Doing this with one hand is fun. Now I'm going to add in my chicken broth. I'm add that right in there. Okay. And I'm going to add some of this cilantro. You can add as much or as little as you want. And I'm going to add some tomato paste right in there. Now all I'm going to do is just give this a stir. Make sure everything is nice and combined in there. Now I'm not going to add my cornmeal or my tortillas at this moment. So that will go in last. So just make sure everything in here is combined well. We're going to put the lid on and we're going to cook this for about three hours. Y'all, I completely forgot to add my beans. So go ahead and add in your beans. Give that another stir. And then cook this on high for three hours. And then we will add in everything else. Okay, guys. So this has been cooking for about three hours. And it smells so, so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my chicken, shred it up, and then I'm going to put that back in there. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my cornmeal. Give that a mix and then add that to my soup here. I'm going to put the lid on and then let that cook for about 30 more minutes. And then I will meet you back here with the tortillas. I'll chop them up into little strips. Add those in there. Let it cook for a few more minutes. And this will be good to go. So I will see you in just a second. Okay guys, so I've shredded up my chicken. I left it in kind of like big chunks. I wanted a little bit more bite to the chicken. I didn't want to shred it up too fine. And then I just added some water to my cornmeal and put that in there. It kind of um, like thickened up a little bit. So I added about one more cup of chicken broth to that. So now all I'm gonna do is put the lid back on this and let this cook for another 30 minutes. Okay, so this has been cooking for about 30 minutes. I've got my tortillas here that I've just got chopped up. It's about five tortillas. I just cut those into little bitty pieces. You can cut them however you like. I'm just going to go ahead and stir these in just a little bit. And I'm going to let this cook while I chop up some green onions and shred up some cheese. And then we will make our plate. Here is my bowl. All I did was added some sour cream, some shredded cheddar cheese, a little bit of green onions, and some red pepper flakes. This smells absolutely delicious. Tastes even better. I can't wait to dig in. So yeah, this is perfect for any fall day. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight. Tonight, I'm going to be making a delicious potato soup. I've made this soup so many times, but I do switch it up depending on how I feel. Potato soup is such a basic recipe that you can add pretty much anything to it and you're just going to make it even better. Tonight, I'm going to make my um, potato soup with dumplings. It's like a more hearty fall style soup instead of just the basic soup that you would make any other time of the year like just the plain uh, potato soup or potato soup with cheese this is a more hearty soup so what I've got going on here is for my seasonings I've got some salt and pepper now the only two seasonings or the herbs that I've got in the recipe is thyme and parsley and that leaves it open so you can add any kind of spices that you like Today I'm going to be using my um, total seasoning. I'm going to be using some garlic powder and onion powder. 
but again you can use whatever kind of seasonings that you like I've got some chicken broth and some water now I just doubled up on the chicken bouillon powder in here and then just added two cups of water I've got some corn some cream you can do half and half or milk if that's what you prefer or have on hand I've got an onion some carrots potatoes and some bacon now I'm going to get this soup going while the soup is cooking I'm going to bring you back here and I'm going to show you how I put together my like a dumpling dough and then we will get that cut out and ready to go in the soup but in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and chop up some bacon get that going in my pot and then I'm going to peel and dice my potatoes dice my onion and my carrots so that's all ready to go in the soup and then I will bring you right back here and we will get this all going Okay, so I cooked my bacon until it was crispy, and then I just removed that to a paper towel lined plate, and I left the bacon grease in there, but you can take it out and add some olive oil or avocado oil if you prefer, um, but it's really good flavor, so I just left it in there, and then I just added in my carrots and my onions, and I'm going to let these cook for about 5 to 10 minutes, just until they're tender. And then we will add some more ingredients. Alright, so my onions and my carrots have been cooking here on low for about 10 minutes. Just slowly rendering those flavors out of the vegetables. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our seasoning. We're going to need some thyme. About a teaspoon. We're going to need some parsley, now when you're using dried herbs a little bit goes a long way because they're really really stout and you're going to add some garlic powder, you can add as much or as little as you want, some onion powder, And I'm going to add some of this total seasoning in there. Not too much because I don't want it to be too overpowering. Probably about a teaspoon. I don't want it to be too salty. A touch more salt and pepper. I'm going to let this kind of toast up just for a second or two just to help release some of those flavors this smells this smells so good okay now I'm going to add in my water and kind of get up some of those brown bits on the bottom turn my heat up to about medium low I am going to give my chicken broth here a little stir, mix it up a little bit, and add that right in. Okay, and now I'm just going to add in my potatoes.
I love using this little bench scraper. I got this in the grilling section at Walmart. Best purchase ever. Comes in handy quite a lot. So I'm just going to give this a stir. I'm going to bring this up to a boil and then I'm going to turn it down on low and let it simmer until the potatoes and the carrots are completely cooked through. In the meantime, I'm going to make my dumplings. Okay, here is everything that you're going to need for your biscuit dough. If you don't want to make your own biscuit dough, canned biscuit dough will work just fine. Just cut them up into either fourths or sixths and that will be good to go. So I've got two cups of flour, I've got some baking powder, baking soda, salt, and some sugar in here. I've got some buttermilk and an egg. So what I'm gonna do is mix all of this together. I'm going to mix my egg in with my milk. Mix it really, really well. Just make sure it's all combined. And then I'm gonna add it in here. Mix it up until it forms a biscuit dough. I'm going to pat it out on a floured surface to about mm, about a half of an inch thick or so. Um, and then I'm going to cut it out into squares. Just like little half inch by half inch squares. And then I'll meet you right back here. Here is my biscuit dough. Like I said, I just mixed all of the dry ingredients together. I mixed the egg and the buttermilk together and then just combined the two and mixed it up until it formed a dough. Put it out on a floured surface, kind of kneaded it, folded it over um, a couple of times and then just patted it out till it was about that thick, about a half of an inch thick. And then I just took a pizza cutter and then just cut them up into slices or squares. And then that's where we're at now. So we're still waiting on the potatoes to get done and then we will add everything else. Okay, this has been cooking for about 15 minutes and the potatoes are almost done. Now I want to go ahead and um, they're still not quite done. They're not as tender as I want them to be. But we are going to go ahead and add in our dumplings. Just be careful adding these in. You're going to add them all in. All of these are in there so we're just going to give this a gentle mix you don't want to stir it too hard I guess you could say because then you'll just break up those dumplings and you want nice dumplings so we're gonna cover this up we're gonna let this finish cooking for about 10 minutes or so just until the potatoes are done and the dumplings are cooked through it should take around 10 to 15 minutes so we're gonna go ahead and let that go and then we will add in our corn cream and our bacon okay it's been about 15 minutes and my dumplings are completely cooked through so I'm going to go ahead and add in my corn now this is a frozen corn but you can use canned corn um, will work just fine I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Give that a little stir. Now this is going to take a few minutes for the corn to kind of warm up. And as you can see, the sauce has thickened up a little bit from the flour that was on the dumplings. So I'm just going to let this cook about another five minutes or so. Just to warm up 
that corn. Okay, so my soup has come back up to a boil and my corn has warmed up and my potatoes are done, my dumplings are done. I'm going to go ahead and add in my cream. And this is going to make it nice and rich. Now, like I said, you can do half and half or you can do milk. Um, that's up to you. I'm just going to add that in there, give that a little mix. And this looks so good. Nice and thick, perfect for fall. Now, you can add the entire thing of bacon to your soup. I'm going to add half of this and just add some on top at the end. I'm just going to add that in there, give that a little mix. And I'm going to give this a taste, check the seasoning, and see if I need to add some more salt or pepper. Give me a little spoon here. Okay, so this is done. It tastes absolutely delicious. I added just a little bit more pepper to this. Um, I thought I was recording, but my battery had died. So I added some pepper to this and that is good to go. Now, if you want to, you can add about one to two cups of cheese to this and it's absolutely delicious. I do that from time to time with potato soup just to switch it up a bit. But today I'm just going to top it with some bacon, cheddar cheese, and some green onions. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and make me a bowl and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, here is my soup. This is all in a bowl for me. It's absolutely delicious. It's hearty, it's filling, and so, so good. So I've got my soup here. On top, I've just got some cheddar cheese, some crumbled bacon, and some green onion. And that is what's for dinner tonight. And that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.